we are. So we are now on to end of 2020. Christmas and end of year messages, and what a year, are we? Uh, well, I was going to do that next, but we can do that first if you'd like. Okay. Um, well, let's move to um, committee memberships. Um, if they're so, um, well, we're going to have to start with those messages, Senator Birmingham. Thanks, sir. Thanks. Thanks, Mr. President, and uh, and indeed, it's that time of year, even if it doesn't always feel like it as uh, as we approach it. Mr. President, it has across Australia been a time this year when in some ways it brings to mind the tale of two cities Dickens phrase of the best and worst of times. In Australia, as we approach the end of 2020, we can have enormous gratitude and thankfulness for the country in which we live and that all Australians live in. When compared against the rest of the world, our nation has come through what has been the most challenging period the world has faced since World War II, far better than most others. We have done so with, with typical Australian resilience and capabilities and compassion. It though has been the worst of times for many around the world, including many in Australia. This year, as we pause, many of us will think of those who have lost loved ones as a result of COVID-19 have suffered loss, personal loss, financial loss, loss of jobs, loss of businesses, the many challenges that many Australians have faced. So this year, Australians can look back, knowing that their resilience, their efforts, their coming together throughout this year has enabled many Australians to withstand the circumstances far, far better than the rest of the world. And there is much to be thankful for but also much that we should be respectful of, mindful of, and pause and give thanks, but also uh, give a sense of reminding ourselves of the losses that have been occurred. In getting through this remarkable year, we in this place owe enormous gratitude to many. Whilst the world has faced a pandemic unlike any other for a century, this place has had to function unlike at any time in its history. And so we pay thanks, first and foremost, to all of those who have enabled our parliamentary institutions that were never designed to face the type of environment we have, where travel became restricted, where ability for members to attend became restricted, and yet we have managed to function through it all. We've functioned as a result of the effort of those who manage these places. And of course, we pay particular thanks to the parliamentary staff, to those in the Department of the Senate, led by our clerk and all of the deputy clerks, but to the teams across the board and across the parliament who have enabled us to meet and to do what Australians have required in the most challenging of circumstances. They have adapted, and we need only look around this chamber to see the large black screens staring back at us as a reminder of the fact that this is a very different image for the chamber than it was at the start of this year. In doing so, no doubt we have learned much in terms of the way in which we can operate, particularly when it comes to the engagement of committees and other processes to get the most efficient and effective use of our time. I think all the teams of those working across the parliament, not only the clerks and their assistants, but of course all across the parliamentary departments those attendants across the chamber who have had to again bear particular burdens of managing the rearranged seating, of managing the restrictions in terms of access, and we pay tribute to them alongside others who have had to do similar. The comcar drivers, the security staff, the cleaners have all had to adapt in this building to changed work patterns, regulations and restrictions as a result of COVID-19. We acknowledge those in the background, the building maintenance, the Hansard staff, of course, the various people uh, working right across the building who make it all hum and tick, whether it's at a normal time or at an extraordinary time. I also want to place on record our thanks particularly to all of the staff of all senators. 
This again has been a very challenging year for them, as Australians have been doing it tough, as measures and radical interventions have been put in place to keep people safe and to keep their economic position secure. Our staff and the staff across many government departments and agencies have had to be on the front line of responding to Australians in their hour of need, to providing them with advice, with compassion, with assistance. And they have done so, I know, across all political offices, all political parties. Our staff will have helped many constituents navigate the support that was available to them to get them through their toughest hours and times. And I thank all of them, as I do across uh, the public service, uh, for their work in stepping up, responding and often performing duties well outside of what they were employed or expected to do. Can I acknowledge, particularly with uh, nearly all of the state leaders in Canberra tonight, the fact that we have also had to call upon much cooperation between the states and the Commonwealth this year. Uh, the advent of the National Cabinet uh, that has allowed for a faster, quicker, more responsive approach to Commonwealth-state cooperation than old COAG mechanisms did has been a good thing. It is hopefully one of the lasting positive changes that come out of this terrible time. Uh, it's not perfect, uh, and of course the Federation still has its battles, uh, but I do acknowledge that the states and their cooperation has been important to all of the efforts that have been made across the board. Returning back to, uh, to the Senate, uh, of course, uh, I have uh, taken on this role as leader during the course of this year. I want to acknowledge firstly my predecessor, uh, Matthias Cormann, and thank him for his leadership and service over many years, as we had done uh, at the time of his departure. But I do particularly also want to thank uh, the current leadership team in Senator Cash and Senator Rustin and, of course, uh, the whips led by Senator Dean Smith uh, and his team of whips, Senator McGrath, Senator Brockman, Senator Perrin from the National Party, who have all done an outstanding job during the course of this year. Ours is a coalition, as we all know, and I particularly thank Senator McKenzie and our National Party friends uh, for their partnership and, Bridget, for your work alongside me. In, uh, in leading and working with the coalition and for all that you did and with Matthias as well uh, during a year that has been a tough one at times. And to all of my Liberal colleagues, I thank you very much for the support that you have provided to Michaela and me as we have stepped up into the leadership ranks and supported us. Uh, and of course, across the board, the hard work in the Senate committees with the committee staff that all senators have performed in a range of different ways. I thank each and every one of you uh, for that. Looking around the chamber, we have disagreements. That can be fierce disagreements at times. We've witnessed some of that even tonight. But it is also the case that in this chamber of this parliament, nothing is ultimately achieved without cooperation. And as fierce as the disagreements get at times, that is something that we all need to keep in mind, uh, that we need to find ways to work together to get things done for the betterment of our country. Our country can stand tall in the world as an influential nation, but one that faces very challenging times right now. Yes, we've stood up to the threats of COVID better than most, but we also find new strategic challenges in our region that will present challenges for some time to come. I congratulate Australians for the resilience they've shown this year. All members of the government, I'm sure all members of the Senate, uh, are proud of the way in which Australians have adapted, responded and survived. We want to see them thrive and succeed in the years to come, and our cooperation in this place will be important to getting them through that. To those who will, as most Australians are, celebrate Christmas and the Christian Christmas, we wish you all every success, every happiness, every blessing in your celebrations. To those who will celebrate other festivities through this period of time, we wish you every happiness through your celebrations. To all Australians, we hope this is a time that people can give thanks for the presence of their loved ones. Remember those, whether from COVID or other causes, that they have lost throughout the course of the year or in the past, but come together, be grateful for being Australians, for being in our great country, and all commit to making sure that 2021 
is a year in which the recovery that is underway uh, is something that helps us all on the journey to further success and prosperity. Mr President, to you, thank you for your leadership through this great year, challenging year, uh, and we wish you, your loved ones and all senators a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Thank you, Senator Birmingham. Thank you. Senator Wong. Uh, thank you, Mr President. I thank the Senate for the opportunity to play some remarks on the record as we end the parliamentary year. <clears throat> well, much has been said about the challenges of 2020 and the impact of the pandemic on everyone's lives, and certainly the Senate has found some extraordinary ways to continue its work. But the, adjust the adjustments all of us have made to our work have been trifling in comparison to the shock and challenges faced by so many of the people we serve. Nearly a million Australians unemployed, one and a half million on JobKeeper, 1.8 million on JobSeeker by the end of the year, and those lost to coronavirus and those who mourn their loss. Uh, the 685 Australians who died in residential aged care, Australians who lost loved ones and homes in the bushfires of last summer. This has been a year that has been tough, a year defined by tragedy, by loss and grief for too many of our fellow Australians. Our job here is to do everything we can to help. Our positions carry great privilege and in return they demand accountability. They demand responsibility to help and protect our fellow Australians. Uh, I'm very proud to lead the Labor team in this place and I am grateful on beh their behalf to play some uh, thanks and season's greetings on the record. I start with you, Mr President. Can I say personally how much I've appreciated the opportunity to work with you again this year? This president is a principled, trusted custodian of the chamber, and I'm grateful for your constructive and cooperative manner, your uh, extraordinary efforts to maintain the operations of this place, including working with states to facilitate the movement of senators for parliamentary business. Whilst occasionally we may not live up to the standards you set, only very occasionally, your commitment to upholding these is, uh, is um, to the benefit not just of this place, but to the Australian democracy, and I know you understand that. I want to thank the Deputy President and Chair Committee, my, my dear friend Senator Lyons, who, takes, who does an enormous amount of work behind the uh, scenes uh, and also in the Chamber as Deputy President and Chair of Committees. Uh, she brings a calm, practical and inclusive approach, and I think we saw that in the difficult debate last night, and I thank her for that. I did tell her she wasn't allowed to leave. Um, <clears throat> it is very important work, and I want to acknowledge her and thank her for her work. Uh, to my uh, counterpart, uh, Senator Birmingham, uh, obviously we have a, for Christmas a freshly minted leader of the government in the Senate. Uh, Senator Birmingham is the fourth leader I have faced. Is that right? Somebody wrote that. Is that actually true? Can I wish him a successful and short stint as leader of the government? <laughs> I also, it was a joke, Michaelia. It was a joke. <laughs> She's looking so serious. I also acknowledge the deputy leader of the government, go, government Senator Cash, uh, and uh, acknowledge her promotion to that role. Uh, on my own side, can I first start with uh, uh, Senator Keneally and say how that I am particularly grateful to my. Uh, Deputy Senator Keneally, who is, and we saw it again this evening, a tireless, fierce advocate for the Labor cause. She is relentless in every aspect in seeking to hold the government to account uh, for, for, for example, for its promise to have Australians who are stranded overseas home by Christmas. Uh, she knows personally the pain of being kept apart from family by the pandemic, the most difficult of times, and through which she has kept going. So, Christina, I hope you have time with your family this Christmas. And I hope you have the time and space to remember and celebrate your father. Uh, I couldn't ask for better sisters uh, to be in the trenches with than Senator Keneally and, of course, the manager of opposition business, Senator Gallagher. Um, uh, she has extraordinary skill, finesse and diplomacy in performing one of the most gruelling and complex jobs in the parliament. Her EQ is high. Mine is not. <laughs> she does her best to make up for it. Did you notice that my colleagues didn't laugh at that joke? Did they? <laughs> I particularly thank her. <laughs> they should, uh, am I supposed to laugh? I particularly thank Katie for the critical role she's played in the COVID-19 Select Committee, which is one of the most far-reaching programs of work I can remember. So, thank you for that. To that, uh, can I also thank the staff of Senators Keneally and Gallagher, who are highly effective and diligent, dogged at times, and a pleasure to work with. I thank my the uh, opposition whip and deputy whip, so to Anne Urquhart, Senator, Senator Ciccone and Senator McCarthy, uh, they're a fantastic team, uh, and I thank them and their staff. 
Uh, my staff have said, I hope the only bells you hear over Christmas are on Santa's sleigh. <laughs> uh, can I thank my team? I thank my team for um, your commitment this year. Uh, it is a privilege to uh, hold the position I hold, and, and uh, it makes the job so much easier knowing I have such an incredibly committed, capable and talented group of individuals supporting our effort. Uh, Anthony Albanese said this week that this is the most talented Senate caucus he can remember, uh, and he was right. So thank you for your work. To all colleagues in this chamber, in the spirit of the Christmas season, I extend my best wishes to all of you and to your families. Uh, those who love us endure a great deal, and without uh, their care and support we wouldn't be able to do our jobs. Uh, I do want to thank the clerk, uh, the de uh, Richard Pye, the deputy clerk, Jackie Morris, Tim Bryant, Rachel Callan and Tony Matulik, the John Begley and all of the staff of the Department of the Senate. Uh, thank you for the work you do for the Australian democracy. Thank you particularly also to the secretaries of committees and staff of secretariats because I know how much your workload has increased. Thanks to the chamber attendants. We really appreciate um, uh, the work you do and the way in which you keep this place going. And I'm sorry my knee keeps hitting my button and you keep having to come over and see if I want anything. Thanks to all at the uh, Department of Parliamentary Service, particularly Services, particular thanks to the um, Parliamentary Library, PBO, and of course also Hansard Security Maintenance and Ancillary staff who work, the effect work to ensure the running of, this, of the House, of the Parliament House. I always want to mention the cleaners. Um, grateful to the work of the hardworking cleaners. Uh, we know how essential their job is to maintenance of the, our health and well-being, uh, and they always deserve more uh, than they are paid. Thanks to all uh, who work, who support what we do inside and outside the building, including the com car drivers, and I thank also uh, the parliamentary security team and the AFP. To the press gallery, this is, this is hard, these are hard times to work in the media, and I acknowledge the uncertainties and pressures you work under, uh, but your work is so important because there is no democracy without you. To staff of Labor senators, I want to express my thanks. We are privileged on this side, and I'm sure um, all, all senators would say this, to be supported by outstanding people, outstanding people. And their efforts are reflected in so much that we do, in the speeches that we deliver, the policies we de develop, uh, the operation of the institution, and of course our ability to serve our constituents. For many staff, it has been a very demanding year. And I want to say that I recognise uh, that personal sacrifice is regrettably often so much a part of the job of being a political staffer. Uh, we are all very grateful. Can I extend my personal, express my personal gratitude to my whole team, ably led by Tom Mooney? And finally, to all the Labor members and supporters throughout Australia, including our friends in the Labor movement, on behalf of the Senate Labor team, I extend our gratitude, our solidarity, and I hope that the holiday season is a happy and safe one to you all. To you all, who, comrades, all comrades who work inside and outside of this place, who continue it's a term of perfection. <laughs> to those who work, those comrades in our movement who work inside and out of this place in service of the Labor cause, who understand that Labor governments change the country and who are working to make a federal Labor government a reality, I thank you for your commitment, your values, your aspiration, and I wish all Merry Christmas, everybody. Yeah. Senator Waters. Thank you very much, President. What a year the world has had. On behalf of the Australian Greens, I express the love and support to all Australians who have suffered this year. What a binfire of a year. Uh, to the formalities uh, here in the parliament, President, can we start by uh, thanking you for the important work that you've done this year to keep the chamber mostly civilised and focused during a particularly chaotic and challenging time. This has been an extremely testing year for everyone, and you have personally done well to keep it ticking along, as has your family, um, and you've been fair and patient 
and you must remember to buy the trampoline for the kids for Christmas. Um, I'd like to uh, extend the Greens' thanks to Clark Richard Pye, to the Deputy Clerk Jackie and to all of the amazing staff at the Tables and Procedure Office, um, to Tony, to both Rachels, uh, everyone in the drafting office. Thank you for your tireless work. Um, to the Senate staff and, of course, the lovely attendants who keep this place ticking over, who thankfully don't have to bring us glasses of water anymore. We can get our own water now, so that's uh, halved their workload, at least in my uh, instance. Um, thank you very much for the work you do for us, but most on behalf of the Australian people. You go about your business professionally and with purpose and with patience. Have a wonderful break from all of us over the Christmas. Uh, thank you next to the gardeners. They make this place look absolutely stunning and they shine a little light onto how our public places should look. And being able to steal a few moments every so often to wander outside brings a much needed perspective to our decision making in this place. I'd also like to thank the Parliamentary Budget Office, the Parliamentary Library, of course the comm car drivers, the security staff, the baristas um, and the chefs at the trough who make fantastic chips and the Department of Parliamentary Services staff for all the service you give us uh, all hours of the morning, noon and night. Uh, particular thanks of course to the cleaners. Um, what a year to recognise the value of cleaners, of teachers, of health workers, um, and to the IT teams for their immense efforts in keeping uh, democracy operating safely during a pandemic, particularly as we've transitioned to remote parliament. Remote parliament was a long time coming, and you did a remarkable job in getting a bunch of technophobes, um, for the most part, to successfully dial in, um, sometimes with cats and pets and other uh, children in the background, which was also delightful to see. I look forward to future discussions about the opportunities for greater participation and diverse representation that remote parliament could provide. Um, thank you to uh, the colleagues from all sides of this chamber. Um, thank you for your commitment to our nation in performing these roles. Um, we know it's not an easy job and we acknowledge the work that you do to represent your constituents, in particular um, to the crossbench as well. Um, thank you to all of the staff of all of you in this building and it's important that we keep those staff safe in this workplace from harassment, from bullying um, and ensure that their interests are best protected. I look forward to working more on that collectively as we resume next year. Um, thank you, of course, to all the engaged citizens in our electorates who contact us with stories, with ideas, with sometimes robust critiques. It's critical to democracy that we remain connected to the people that we represent. I'd, of course, like to thank my wonderful Greens Senate team, uh, all true friends and passionate advocates. Um, a particular thanks to all of our Greens staff who keep us on track and special mention uh, to Claire to Colin, to Rod, to Jay and to my staff, uh, Jess and Justine, who come here to Canberra. Um, we couldn't do any of this without you. It's been a big change uh, this year for our party with a change of leadership and the wonderful member for Melbourne, Adam Bant, has handled this year marvellously despite a pandemic and working on the wrong side of the building. Um, and we're also pleased to welcome our fierce new senator, Lydia Thorpe, who, I might add, makes this place majority female for the first time in its history. I want to particularly thank Rachel, our whip, um, for the power of work that she does not only to advocate never-endingly for vulnerable Australians but to also wrangle the bunch of us, some of us easier than others to wrangle. I think Rach is the best whip in this place and probably will be the best whip that this place ever sees. Um, I, on a personal note, I want to say thank you uh, to my daughters and my family for their love and support. The work of everyone in this place comes at the cost to our family, and uh, none of us could do this without them. My oldest daughter graduated from primary school yesterday, and I'm very much looking forward to giving her a cuddle and celebrating it tomorrow. I'm sure everyone's similarly in that boat. Thank you all for the sacrifice and the commitment and the passion you bring to these roles. I'll just sign off by saying to those of you who don't believe in Christmas, not mentioning any names. Happy, non-denominational, gender-neutral, environmentally sustainable, socially responsible holidays. Uh, for the rest of you, happy Christmas. <laughs> Senator McKenzie. Oh, well, I believe in Christmas, but um, thank you very much. I'd like to associate the Nationals with all of the wonderful words that have been uh, mentioned tonight. 2020 for regional Australia has been a tough one. Started it with the drought, 
It's broken in a lot of places, which has been fantastic, and we've seen bumper season, bushfires, floods, uh, and obviously COVID. Um, where, if you're in a border town, you couldn't, as Senator Keneally had to um, experience, be with loved ones at very difficult times. Um, you're separated, and I know there's so many of us around this chamber, around our uh, nation, who are very thankful premiers have finally opened the borders, and that they can actually catch up with their very dear um, family and loved ones at this particular period. Thanks to our government for actually making the tough decisions and steering our nation uh, as best as possible to protect lives and livelihoods. And I think it, relatively uh, to the rest of the world, we can be very um, confident that the right decisions were made. Thank you to the opposition for supporting our government uh, in many of those very, very difficult programs that have supported uh, Border Australia. Thank you to our frontline workers uh, with respect to COVID. Um, it's scary sending your loved one onto the front line, and I, uh, we just want to say thank you to them. Thank you to the, all the staff of Parliament House. You keep it ticking. Um, it hasn't been an easy year. To the CFA, the RFSs, thank you. Um, Simon, thank you very much for your leadership of the government in the Senate, um, and I look forward to working <coughs> with you very closely on behalf of our two uh, parties within a strong coalition in 2021. Uh, Vale Matias, uh, the legend, uh, but he has been with us much. <laughs> no, no. Well, he's left. Okay, Penny, he's left the building. It... No, no. I'm not saying. Okay, all right. It's all right. It's late. Um, I want to say thank you to the fantastic National Party Senate team. We have rocked. Like we've done very, very well on behalf of our communities and the people that sent us here this year, and I'm really looking forward to you all getting a good rest and uh, recuperation and coming back fighting in 2021. Thank you to Paul Murray for letting Matt arrive late to his Daily Sky interview today. <laughs> um, and just wish everybody in the chamber, all your family, a very blessed and sacred uh, Christmas season. Thank you. Thank you. If I could make some observations myself and commence by associating myself with all the comments of the four party leaders. Um, I've got a lot of thank yous to acknowledge this year. Um, and I'm going to start with the people I think make are the real custodians of, uh, of the Senate in many ways, and that is the team of staff led by the clerk, Richard Pye, the deputy clerk, the assistant clerks, all the staff in the Department of the Senate, um, in particular the committee staff. Um, we know that in a year like this, a parliament sitting matters. Um, the staff have had to do extraordinary things to enable us to go about our work, undertake extraordinary workloads. And this parliament has successfully sat the committee that Senator Wong mentioned, chaired by Senator Gallagher with Senator Patterson and all parties represented on it. Um, he has undertaken a very serious amount of work and this parliament has functioned. I might say, unlike some of our states, where they have not been able to continue in the same way, and that is a shared commitment across all sides, despite the occasional difference, but a shared commitment across all sides that I have experienced this year in both houses. Um, we farewelled John Brown during the year. It does feel odd for the first time in my 14 years to not be farewelling John and his, uh, thanking John and his team of attendants, but to Steve and the team of attendants, thank you uh, for all the work that you do. In a, in a year like this, more than most, we remember that we are reminded that we often take a lot for granted. Um, the basic things we do, but in this building in particular, I'd like to have a particular thanks for the Department of Parliamentary Services, who sometimes don't always get the plaudits they deserve. And that is from the cleaning staff, who we previously um, did not depend on to the same degree for our safety. Um, the IT staff, who we had to ensure this parliament could keep functioning in a matter of weeks without people travelling, and broadcasting, who have enabled a rapid transition to virtual participation so that our work could keep going, to name just a few. We have asked a lot from them this year, and they have delivered. I want to make a, have a few personal thanks for people the Speaker and I have worked with on your behalf in the health departments. 
to Professor Michael Kidd and Dr Catherine Kelleher from the Commonwealth Department of Health. We have had fortnightly conferences with them that have involved everything from wearing masks to the seats we put you in to when we can sit. Um, to when Aussies can open or you can use the gym. And they have been available and answered the most detailed questions for this unique workplace that, like nowhere else in the country, was bringing people from all around our nation when others were not able to travel. Um, the ACT Department of Health were exceptionally helpful. Um, occasional disagreements might have happened, but the officials in the Department of Health there facilitated the travel of people uh, across state and territory borders where travel restrictions were put in place. And I'd like to thank Vanessa Del Mollen in particular, who I worked with um, and I can imagine the Victorian Senate has worked very closely with um, over the last six to eight months. Um, to the leaders and whips, to the very kind words said by um, Senators um, Birmingham, Wong, Waters and Mackenzie, thank you on a personal level. Um, but to the whips also, we have had to have challenging, difficult, under pressure discussions at various points this year um, and our shared commitment to this Senate working and your uh, belief that um, us and the officials are working on, on your behalf and the Senate's behalf have made that possible. Um, to the Deputy President, Sue Lyons, thank you very much for your support and all the work that you have done, um, particularly in very long committee stages, very late when I can't even come in and relieve you. Um, to the Speaker, the Prime Minister and the Leader of the Opposition in the other place. You know, this has been a year where um, we've had to do a lot more in some ways together in the operation of the parliament because we could not take for granted that we could be here. And I'd like to thank them. I know that, that, that work has been done across parties to ensure that we could come together. To all senators, um, you have been very understanding. Um, Arrangements have constantly changed. You have had to travel at short notice. You've had to stop not travel at short notice. Some of you have been turned around while travelling. Um, your understanding of these arrangements uh, and your personal support for me and the work I do, I just want to say a very big thank you uh, for your flexibility and understanding. To all our staff, um, it has been a challenging year. To my staff in particular, who I hadn't seen for several months up until the borders opened, being here in Canberra, my deepest appreciation for you being able to work and, and in, in very challenging circumstances, given they were based in Melbourne. I want to particularly thank my Victorian colleagues. I'm not just being parochial. parochial. Uh, most of you have had a tougher year than a lot of others because of the situation in Melbourne. Um, that your staff have had to work from home. Um, you haven't been able to travel. You have been had limitations placed on you at home. And I know that has been made your job more challenging, so I want to thank you in particular. Our families, all of our families, who here in the toughest of all years have felt our absence probably more than any other year. Um, they have shown an enormous um, understanding of what we do. Um, they've appreciated that we view our roles are important, and I know I speak on behalf of all senators when I say that Thank you for understanding our absence in this year in particular, although one did say to me that he wasn't sure whether his family wanted him as present as he had been this year either. <laughs> one thing that this year has done to me is to make me think. We may never know what burdens, sadnesses or challenges other people have. Um, and in a year like this in particular, we don't necessarily know which of our colleagues have had family losses, illnesses. Um, job losses and all the challenges that all Australians have experienced this year. This year has been a time to remember that and to remember heading into a season that may not be as joyous for all of us in this building, let alone across the community. Um, empathy is something we can take away from this year, I hope. Now, just on a personal level, I'm, I want to thank my own family, um, Helen, Nick and Ben. And Helen's parents, John and Fran, who have carried a burden for us when we've come here on very short notice uh, and who even let us use their home to quarantine in um, so that we could stay together. I want to say, um, particular thanks to my own mother, who has borne a very difficult year with stoicism I don't think I could muster. But I just want to finish with this. Merry Christmas to everyone. Normally the focus is on the Merry Christmas bit, but let, let us just go away saying, let us all not just have a Merry Christmas, but a very happy new year and hope for a very different 2021. Thank you all.